Good afternoon, Etha community. I hope you're doing well today. Today I am calling in from Hamburg and I have a wonderful Ayurvedic doctor student with me from India, Muskan. So we'll wait a minute for people to join. Oh, there she is. And I'm gonna invite Muskan in. Interesting subject today. Really look forward to sharing this with you. There she is. Hi, Hi. beauty. Hi, how are you? Hi. <laughs> I'm very well. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm doing really good. You look so beautiful today. <laughs> Thank you, love. <laughs> so do you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I know Muskin for a long, a fair amount of time, maybe a year or so. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's nice to do a live with you again and get to pick your yeah. brain about a few things. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've been waiting to do this since a long time and finally today's the day. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing really nice. I've come to my grandmom's home. Oh, nice. So, yeah, right. Today I'm going to be talking about really different uh, topics, right? And it's completely different, so... I'm excited to talk about this today. Yes, a little bit out <laughs> of, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone. We'll see. Yeah, but, yeah, um, actually it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. For those of people who don't know you, do you want to present yourself a little bit? Just tell us a few things about yourself. Maybe something but, that we don't know already. <laughs> uh, um, about today's topic or in general? No, just about you. Who are you? Okay. Um, okay. Well, I have been uh, like, if I say educationally, I have been a nerd all my life. But since I entered college, this new uh, person has entered me and I don't know. I'm still trying to find that. And uh, other than that, I am basically from Gujarat, uh, India, and I am an Ayurveda student right now studying Ayurvedic science. And yeah, I think that sums up. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. And um, yeah, you're sharing very beautifully about your journey into Ayurveda, through Pasha Karma, um, a lot of skin health care, and um, through meditation has been a big part of your life as well, right? And right. We've, we've talked a lot about yoga as well. And yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I know that that's been a part of your life too. So yes. yeah, it's really nice to share with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So today we're going to talk a little bit about relationships and Ayurveda. And yes. um, I know that you've gone through a pretty intense lockdown in India. How was that for you? Okay, so we are in a lockdown 4.0 right now. There has been four lockdowns since. And uh, lucky to say that lockdown four has been a lot liberal. So we can, uh, you know, uh, travel like right now I'm at my grandmom's home, for example, we can travel like that in lockdown four, lockdown one and two were really, really strict. So we couldn't travel as much and we were all locked in our homes. And we used to just go out uh, just for, you know, vegetables and milk and very important stuff. It was like a curfew going on. So, yeah, so it has been like that. It's been around, um, I guess, two months that we are locked down in India. So, yeah, it's been pretty intense, actually. And the first experience for me, too. Yeah. And who, who were you locked in with? <laughs> you were, <laughs> how was your relationships in the, in the lockdown? How did you manage that? Staying together oh, my God. So long? Okay, so <laughs> I'm a single child. So I have been locked down with my mom and dad. That's all. So it, luckily, uh, the day before the lockdown started, I just came back from, you know, my the place where I used to study. I just came back home just the day before the lockdown started. So it was actually a good thing. And otherwise, the travel were not uh, allowed after that day. So it was really good thing and I was really, really excited to, you know, stay with my parents after so long because since I moved out to study, I haven't stayed with my parents since so long, you know, so I was really actually looking forward to this. I didn't mm. know that this lockdown would be extended till two months, 
but <laughs> yeah but i actually i was looking forward to this so yeah it's been really wonderful and um, to be really honest you know i'm a kind of person who uh, who is her authentic self when she is surrounded with people really close to her right so and that is not the case when i am in my university and in my college right so i didn't know that but now that i notice it that i have been my authentic self since last two months because i have been with my parents i have been surrounded with people that i really you know care about and are really close to me so it it really feels nice it really feels calm so yeah like i know the situation is really going worse uh, day by day because of the corona virus but at home i just feel you know that home feeling that cozy feeling i have been craving it for so long i finally had it and now i'm at peace so i feel good actually for this lockdown do you, um i don't think it's been like that for everyone i i've actually heard of a lot right. of people who you know right. relationships that's been breaking up the yeah. people that have been struggling having the kids at home and of course there's that wonderful side to it but uh, yeah. it can also be challenging spending so much time with the same people for an extended time right do you have any yeah. what what are you doing for it to work out so well in your family <laughs> uh i don't know <laughs> like it's been just me and my parents always you know it's been just the family of smaller people so i think when there's a smaller group there's a lesser option of conflict i think so so we just happen to always understand each other very nicely so we just try to you know work like there has been some days you know where we can where there has been conflict but we three are in understanding that those days don't really count and that's not what matters at the end of the day so uh, to be really honest what do we really do is uh, at the end of the day we all of three, all the three of us leave our mobile aside and just sit down with each other and talk and you know play games and do rubbish stuff actually and it's been so much fun <laughs> and just enjoy with each other that's all that's all we had done since two months at the end of the day at night after dinner especially we just sit down with each other and talk how has our day out been and you know just random stuff nothing really important or nothing really in particular but yeah it's been just it's been wonderful for me actually to spend time with them the first thing you said was we put our phones away and that sounds like that is a big part of that coming together that you do that without your phones in your hand yes. is that yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i guess <laughs> i think yeah it increases the intimacy a lot in the relationship right of when course. you not, don't have the phone around yeah of course it does because uh, you know it happens with us like especially general uh, like younger generation that we all gather together but we are not really together because we all are always clicking pictures of each other or you know taking videos of each other so we don't really take that in our mind we don't really connect to that moment but and it has been with me also but i don't know when i'm with my parents i don't feel the need to take my phone you know hmm. i don't feel the need to you know just take uh, take my phone and you know, i just feel the need to talk to them i just feel the need to connect to them as much as i can because i know that once this lockdown is over i'm not going to have them as much as i have now hmm. so i'm just cherishing this moment as much as i can hmm. that's beautiful <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah And uh, so has it always been like that? We always yeah. have a good relationship. Yeah. Yeah, cool. gratefully. My parents yeah. have been really supportive with everything uh, that I have been touch wood with that and even in my worst of times even uh, you know when I have not been myself at the times uh, when I was mm. going through depression or something some parents really don't tend to understand but I don't know I have been really lucky enough to have such kind of friends who support me in every decision that I make. Um uh, in fact I am the first uh, person from my own family who is in uh, you know this who is in this field of doctory right 
no one in my family is from this background so i'm completely new in this and no one really started in initially understand what i was doing especially when i started this page no one really understand what i'm doing with my life right but <laughs> but everything made made sense uh, to them later but my mm-hmm. parents has always been supportive they they just tell me one thing at the end of the day that i know you are mature now and you are going to make the best decision after analyzing every situation so we trust in you so at the end of the day that is what is uh, you know making me uh, more self confident in myself that has been a huge part in making me uh, believe in myself because i know that they have like i have their back right so it has been a huge uh, backbone for me to be really honest <laughs> and i have seen people i have seen friends i have seen many people not really having that kind of um relationships with their parents and uh, like it really takes toll on their life you know not just career wise not just relationships wise but in deep way uh, they they carry a lot of trauma within themselves in a different way and it it comes out in a form that no one else can really understand unless that person really analyzes herself or himself right so that's what i've been really lucky in that way that i have not been uh, like that i have always had their support yeah wonderful and yeah. so is do you, are you able to are you talking about everything or like can you talk to them about everything or what, like what is your communication like cuz it sounds like you have that there's good communication going on right if you can spend so much time together and still have a really healthy relationship right so yeah. uh, i'm just you know completely transparent with only two aspects of my life with my parents i'm completely transparent and with very few closer friends of mine who are really close to me i'm completely transparent and my authentic self with both of them because i really believe that at the end of the day when it comes to relationships not only communication but you know honesty and loyalty is also going to make a huge difference as much as uh, communication is going to make a huge difference because you need to talk it out right because if you are not talking out and if you are expecting someone to behave a certain way and that person have no idea that you are expecting this so what you are doing at the end of the day you are just hurting yourself mm. so i i have just realized this earlier in my life that it's better to communicate completely honestly honestly you know mm. even if this means that i'm not sounding good at a times you know even if that means i'm sounding bitter at times or i don't know like it's okay to not always sound good but it's always better to have clear conversations with people who really matter to you so with my parents Just and with... yes right so i have always been like that <laughs> so try to say it even if it's not easy or even if the thought isn't completely finished at least try to convey what you what you want to say and yeah yes. Yes, right. There. Yeah, that's great. And, and sometimes it really happens, you know, that you need your own space. Sometimes it really happens that with everything going on, you can't communicate. But what what does really make a difference in relationship? Is, what I think really makes a difference in relationship is that you need to talk to that person about that too. That listen, I am not in a space right now to talk it out. I need my space. i just you know analyze it myself and i'll come back to you so that even that person doesn't question you know everything going on like what's really happening why is this person and, and you also have it back in your mind that i have to gather myself for this person because i have told him or her that i'll come back to you after i gather myself so i think that is also an important part of relationship because it's not always important to be present um like it's not always possible to be present right like we are far away sometimes but we know that this person is going to be there for me like no matter what 
right so that belief is what we want to do with our relationships we want to make that human connection emotional attachment and by emotional attachment i don't mean uh, in a you know negative way because a lot of emotional attachment goes in a like at the end of the day hurting yourself when it comes to emotional attachment but i don't know why i have been like this but i have always been balanced with emotional attachments like i know i can be emotionally attached to you but i cannot be emotionally attached to you to the extent that i hurt myself at the end of the day i know that there has been a situation going on and that is the reason like not none are your intentions like that none is my intention like that is the situation what is making this conversation going bad right so i think balance is the key and i think i i take this from ayurveda actually to be really honest i take this from ayurveda because ayurveda mm-hmm. really says that nothing in excess is good right nothing in excess is good for you not even your laughter not even like sadness nothing like everything has to be in balance and that will be the real thing right so i think i take this from ayurveda i have learned this gradually and um i mean attachment can also be a sign of excess kapha dosha right so that it sounds like you have your kapha dosha yes, in check in that right. way yeah yes. and do you think the doshas of your parents or your constitutions and yours is is that playing a role in your relationship so can you see that in other relationships too um i think it does because i don't really seem to cope up well with vata person <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah i i i have i have observed this in myself and i like i have few people in my life who are you know uh, like having good relationships who are vata person but i don't do i don't cope up well with completely a single a single vata person right like i can't just um sometimes you know uh cope up well with people who are not stable within themselves i uh, if i'm closer with any person i need to uh, have a relationship with the, those kind of person who are first stable themselves uh, who are first better with themselves i need to make sure that they are good with themselves because we need to understand that if we are good with ourselves we we will be better with ourselves uh, like different people like to the world and maybe that's why i started meditating at at a first time you know because i understood um that we need to first calm our storms then then only we can talk to other people like what's bothering you because if we are not healed ourselves how are we even going to you know ask for the another person to heal themselves so yeah i think someone's writing emotional level is also related to our triguna balance right i think it it does i think for a second would did you say something about that no 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 i didn't know yeah i i said that i think it does yes right that's right mhm yeah yeah but do you, uh, do you want to explain for the people who don't know what the three guna balance is yeah sure so actually uh, there are three gun of our body like there are three dosh of our body physical dosh which is the vatsit and kapha just like that there are three gun in our body which is the uh, tamasic and rajasic right and uh, it has actually been uh, classified under the doshas itself like it has been popularly said that satvic gun has been uh, like comes under the kapha dosha and rajasic dosha uh, rajasic gun comes under the pitta dosha and tamasic gun comes under the vata dosha but it has not really been like that it 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 mixes a lot you know because none, none of a single dosha is pure in a single person and that's why in the same day guna also uh, matters and what do i personally feel is that 
our environment and uh, what do i mean by environment that is that people around us you know and community that we live in also plays a huge role in building up the guna that we end up in mm-hmm. yeah i really believe that because it it all really affects just like we are taking a lot of information in and our mind it plays with our minds and that's why it it, it makes a huge role you know it, it takes you to to have a good uh, environment and have a good uh, amount of people good quality of people in your life to have that kind of state of mind what we say guna and uh, ayurveda yeah beautiful um yeah. so is there do you have another example of how we can apply ayurveda in our relationships and in understanding the connection to other people yeah like as i just said earlier that what i take from ayurveda in terms of relationship is to always stay balanced and to like uh, this also comes like you know in a form of reactivity right we need to calm ourselves like not every person is able to lot of people are reactive like really reactive when it comes to relationships they just want to take up the topic and create a scene and i don't mean to point anyone out but i just mean to say that it's better to understand just stop and you know pause for a second and think about the situation before you try to react and this is what i think i would really mean when it comes to balancing right because it's not always necessary to react when it comes to relationship yeah so true and we we don't see the world as it is right we see it as we are i see yes. the world as i am so i see it through my yes. lens and Yeah yeah so so to take a step back and yeah and observe yes. and and get clear about what what is triggering or what what are you seeing and then um yeah take take it from inside out instead of outside in right yes yes that's right and i really feel that meditation plays a huge role in this uh, um i didn't really believe in this uh, believed in this back then like 3 years back i didn't really believed in this but i told you right when we first uh, when we chatting when we were chatting a while ago that i don't feel the need to meditate when i'm home right i don't mm-hmm. feel the need to meditate when i am with my parents because i'm mm-hmm. at peace with myself when i'm home i'm at peace with everything when i'm home and i don't need to feel the calm to i don't feel the need to calm the storm that is within me you know when i'm home so it really happens because back in university or when you're out there in the world all the situations are not in your control and you know a lot of situations may happen where uh, you may be triggered or you may be you know uh, able to, you may uh, have come to a situation where you feel the need to react right but at the end of the day that we need to understand that okay i need to stop here because this is not me i am not reactive and i am not easily triggered that's why i need to calm myself and that's why i am that's why i meditate really religiously when i'm back in the university at college i really meditate religiously when i'm there because i don't know what situation is going to come up and i don't know what can trigger me so i need to calm myself at uh, like first thing in the morning so that i can really cope up with the situation throughout the day i was also thinking about what you said um about staying balanced and the gunas and what are some things that we can eat what can we do with food to stay balanced within ourselves so that we can also stay more balanced in our relationships right so uh i think when it comes to sattva raja and tamas foods are also divided into those parts right there are certain foods that really trigger you there are certain foods that make you feel bad and there are really some kind of food that 
to those kind of food we really want to uh, be in that state of mind or consume those kind of food that makes us happy uh, or even like not really happy it just you know uh, brings peace in ourselves makes us feel satisfied at the end of the day like having a meal that makes us satisfied is what uh, like is plays a huge role right and mm. and and even in our physical aspect it plays a huge role and what what we don't really understand sometimes it is that food also really plays a huge role in our mental state and i learned this in a hard way i didn't know this until i went back you know to to i until i moved out of my house i never knew the importance of homemade food i never knew the importance of uh the food that is made with love until i went back there and i ate all the hostel food that i had to and i really uh disturbed my whole mental and physical aspect in the initial years of my college just because of food believe me with that because um it really happens you know that we don't get satisfied with the food and what what we do is feed off that is that we uh we try to find comfort in junk foods we try to find comfort in sugary foods right so i i also happen to suffer with sugar addiction and when i'm home i don't really feel that because and now i have shifted to a new place like in my own flat so i can make my own uh, food so this is what has changed within me throughout the time from my college you know that that food also plays a huge role in our mental aspects mm-hmm. so the kind of food you know that are fresh um we really need to eat warmer foods the foods that are uh, satvik in nature you know the kind of food like veggies and sprouts and um nuts a lot of fru- fruits are there that are really sap doing that to have a satvik state of mind and uh there are foods like you know uh mm, tea coffee that will trigger us you know like it will it will uh, or some kind of uh you know like uh drugs some kind of drugs will also trigger us right it will just light up our mind those kind of food are rajasik and it will feel good at a moment but we won't right and there are some foods like tamasic really ta- tamasic those are the food um you know uh that are made from uh the animals who are really suffering deep in their cells who who have been killed to uh like to have us a meal those kind of food is really tamasic because it has been created with a uh like not really good intention that that animal has fight his own life to give us a food those are the food that are really tamasic in nature sometimes so it really plays a huge role the energy we take in through food really makes takes like makes a huge role in our uh, mental aspect so i've learned this in a hard way <laughs> also also how we view it right if we if we feel good about what we're eating if we're sitting down we're really allowing the food in then it's also going to have a more positive effect on us or in, as you said too if it comes from someone that's cooked it with love and with good intention yes. and it's fresh yes, and warm it's really- and yeah yeah really it really yeah. plays a huge role you know it, as you know as a person who are in uh, health com- health community it's not all like we talk about you know taking always fresh food or consuming the food that are always warm but sometimes it's not possible right sometimes it's not possible due to some kind of event going on or due to some social gathering it's not always possible to have the kind of food that we choose so at that time we need to make sure that we have our intentions right in our mind we need to make sure that before consuming a meal we are uh, feeling gratitude for that food you know we are consciously um, giving that energy to ourselves which may not have been in there in the food that we are about to consume so i think that is the kind of balance we need to do sometimes you know that sometimes we are, if we are not having the kind of food that we really want to we just 
make an intention good for our health and just make it feel good so that yeah so that it can help with the digestion and so that it can help with our mental aspect too and then in turn help with our relationships and how we show up in the world yes of course Yeah. <laughs> Last time we spoke, uh we talked a little bit about the difference between Indian food and Ayurvedic food because I think a yes. lot of people when you say Ayurvedic food they think oh that's Indian food right away. <laughs> What would you say is the difference? <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, actually a lot of Indian food is Ayurvedic food, but I'd say not having a lot of food that are not really made with the principles of Ayurveda. and when it comes to ayurvedic food what it doesn't really matter you know that if you are having khichdi or if you are having oats what really matters is that uh, the properties of the food and the principles of the food that you are making right this is what matters when it comes to ayurvedic food and i see this a lot of time uh, you know there's a shift in culture now from east to west right So now what really is happening is that a lot of western people are uh, you know adapting indian food considering it as ayurvedic but that's not what really ayurveda suggests what i really feel is that uh desh and kal also plays a you know huge role so ayurveda always suggests to eat local right so there's a reason you are born in that area in your own place and there's a reason that certain amount of food or certain kind of food grows in that area so the the kind of food that grows in your area is is what is meant for you that is the real truth it's it's not like ayurveda was at that time when it was written 5000 years ago it was uh, like it was written like taking into consideration indian things right but what i what do i really what am i trying to say here is that it does not mean that the examples given in that uh like has like has to be taken uh you have to understand you have to understand two things when it comes to ayurvedic eating properly and that's all and you need to take care about uh you know uh, cooking when it comes to cooking you need to follow the ayurvedic principles just like you need to include all the six tastes uh right all the six rasa and you need to have warm outdoors food the kind of principles that are given into uh the ayurvedic text that is what has to be taken into consideration rather than the examples given right so when it comes to indian food it's not always ayurvedic because we also eat a lot of oily food we also eat a lot of you know a uh, junk food which is which is indian in origin right so it is not really made with uh, ayurvedic principles but that does not mean that um, it's not uh, like ayurveda is, does not really suggest on this so there is surely a difference between ayurvedic food and indian food but yes uh, there is a huge thing is that you know if we go local in our in our own india right if we go local um a lot of festivals and a lot of food um are you know being made and a lot of food is is being made and a lot of food are grown with uh, and it connects to the festivals that inherently we are just consuming those kind of food. and i learned came do you understand what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is that just for example uh, when it comes to um january or february right it's winter season in india and uh, it's it's the festival of uttrayan right kite festival in india when it comes to january so uh, it's a tradition that we eat sesame a lot of sesame foods right so it was always it has always been a tradition like that but i didn't know that it's ayurvedic now when i and when i went to my college and i started studying and i came to know that okay sesame is uh you know recommended when it during uh, its position this is what people have been saying that is 
but not all indian food is ayurvedic yeah that makes a lot of sense i hope yeah. everyone can hear well i was i lost you a little bit sometimes your video is freezing a little bit for me but hopefully it's better for everyone else <laughs> oh yeah okay. i i caught i think i i caught what you were saying that it's it's seasonal rather than um indian yeah and that yes. and that can be applied applied to wherever we live right if you just follow the principles cooking warm food adding yes. all the six tastes using spices making it digestible and eating when you're hungry and uh listening to your body and then yeah yes right matter. like exactly it doesn't really matter because in india itself right like india is so huge in india itself there's a lot of difference in tradition you might be knowing right like what is available here and my own place might not be available what is in what is available in south india and there might be some common food but we are like every indian always uh, try to eat local and this is what really uh, helps with a lot of things you know like immunity and stuff like that so uh, that's what i wanted to say that when it comes to changing or adapting uh, the food that are from ayurveda i would really suggest to not take the examples that are mentioned in ayurvedic text because those are indian food what i really suggest is to take the principles given in the ayurvedic uh, ayurvedic text right so that you can uh, take your own food because that is grown in your region right and then make it ayurvedic we swayed away a little bit from the subject this is very interesting too <laughs> but i also yeah. i just wanted to ask you again coming back to relationships i mean it it all it's all connected right if we feel good if our digestion is working well if we're of eating course, for what course. our body needs our mind is going to benefit and our relationships is going to benefit that's how we ended up here um <laughs> but i just wanted to talk to you to a little bit about the concept of brahmacharya so um for some people it's translated as celibacy right but it can also just be relating to relationships and how we spend our energy if we if we are overspending our energy in relationships doing too many things at one at one time and not being present and how how would you how would you um, how would you define that or like that concept of managing your energy well in relationships okay so uh I don't know how to really um, manage that you know but what do I uh, I'll just put on two point of views one ayurvedic point of view and one point of view that is my own uh the what does ayurveda really says about celibacy uh the what was uh you know the point behind saying it was that at that time in that culture like 5000 years back you know there were a lot of people a lot of uh people who were in in aim at the end of the day right so uh, i think it was really suggested for those people who are into spirituality because um that that thing like uh, in ayurveda there are seven dhatus in our body right and the seventh dhatu is shukra dhatu right and when we conserve that energy and what is your, and if you even you know uh, talk about yoga and stuff like that the most unstable chakra in our body is sacral chakra right mm -hmm. and when it comes to ayurveda i will also say that the most important dhatu is shukra dhatu because uh, every uh, dhatu is getting nourishment and at the end of the day uh, shukra dhatu is getting nourishment from all the six dhatu like it's coming it's descending from like that so shukra dhatu is the main dhatu and if we just spend it you know if we just don't conserve it and if we just spend it 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 won't really um, you know help it much other than just uh, some kind of uh, like yeah but if we conserve it you know on the other hand if we really conserve it what really happens is it really uh, travels all all the way from our spine to our head and this is what is going to help us this is what really is going to help us with our spirituality with our stable uh, you know stability in our mind and our body and is what really going to help us with um 
creativity too, if I say, to be really honest. Yeah, because uh, if any person is really aiming something, you know, if, uh, in today's world, if I'm, if I'm giving my point of view, if, suppose, say, any businessman is aiming something, right, like to really be the next richer person in the world, and if that person is really uh, conserving his energy, I bet that person is going to be really successful soon enough rather than the person who is spending that energy. Mm-hmm. Because we need to understand the powers of that energy because it's, it's really, really um, too much high that sometimes we, we just, under, uh, like, it's underrated. Sometimes it's really underrated and a lot of people don't really believe in this. But unless you really experience this thing, you won't know the benefits of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it's really, uh, and when it comes to managing it, I, uh, I, I read this somewhere. I don't really know where I read this. But when it comes to uh, relationships and uh, brahmacharya, what, what really uh, spiritual people did once, uh, you know, back in the days, I'm not talking about modern world, what they used to do back in the days was, they just, uh, you know, made love once a year with the purpose of, you know, with sole purpose of creating a baby. And that's all. Otherwise, they conserve all their energy and they just spend it all in the aspect of spirituality because they want salvation at the end of the day. A different way of living, like to how many ah, people like, live today. It was back in the day, really old, like five thousand years ago. That can't happen nowadays. We all know, right? But this is what I really mean to say that at that time, what what did they really meant to say when it comes to conserving this energy? Is because it really helps us with uh, stability in our mind and creativity, creativity with our mind. So it helps us with salvation. Uh, we got a comment here. Ayurveda says we do transfer our energy through aura and it depends on the type of energy you come in contact with as well. Your capacity to identify, feel and control over it. It depends on your body chakra and balance among them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's and true. Is, we can all learn how to manage it, right? I, I'm, I've done yeah. a lot of meditations on managing your energy and um, yeah. kind of cleaning out stuff of your space that you don't want there anymore and um, making sure that it's flowing and yeah, moving energy through the chakras and things. And yes, yeah, we can right. all learn how to do this. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Because when it comes to modern world, it's, it's all about pleasure, but I'll also uh, bring out within this. It's, it's all about balance. Much because that's not possible. It's not always possible. People like us, people like us, really understand what's happening, right? And if we are working too hard on ourselves, our own selves, and if we are spending it on the other day too much, it really takes a toll on us. You know, we don't. And at the end of the day, if we are spending it too much, and uh, in the morning, if we are just concentrating on ourselves, meditating a lot, we will not get that peace of mind that we are really aiming, and we'll get frustrated with the practices that we are doing. So it will, it will not help us in that way. So it's all about balance. It's all about moderation. Again, Ayurveda. <laughs> yes. We're going to start to round up, Muskan. It's been 45 minutes already. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tried to know it's been 20, uh, 45 minutes. Yeah. It's so nice to speak to you. And yeah, we... Um, I, yeah, I, I haven't told you so much about Isa, but it's um, it's a collective yeah. of uh, a lot of different teachers, and we have a beautiful academy coming up soon. So um, okay. yeah, more will be revealed. Um, and uh, for now, I think that's what I can say. So it's really, really nice to have you on board, and I'd love to have you again and um, continue to follow you and uh, share your beautiful, share your beautiful knowledge in a in your authentic <laughs> way. It's really nice to follow you along. Thank you. It's been really a pleasure to have you. Yeah. And thank you for having me today. If anyone has 
more questions, feel free to send them to us and I'll forward them to Muskan or, uh, or we'll make another live and you can answer them then. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, okay. it was really nice to chat with you today. Sleep well. Yeah. It's, all, it's always almost night there, no? I'm no, it's, it's but evening. Seven. Yeah, it's evening. Five, oh, like six o'clock. Yeah. 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 It's even further, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much, Moskan. Have a beautiful evening. You have a nice day, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.